What's going on everybody and welcome back to Stu's Garage. Uh, today we're bringing you another awesome DIY to help you save a little bit of money and get your hands dirty making your own parts. So let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, so today we're gonna be making a DIY expansion tank. And uh, for this, what you're gonna need is a length of a uh, three inch pipe, um, a little bit of metal tubing, a smaller diameter than this would be nice, but um, this is this will work for us, we can make it work. Um, two end caps for your three inch pipe and a cap and a threaded receptacle I guess whatever you call this thing um, all together this stuff costs about 20 bucks no more than 25 bucks and um, we're gonna use this to make an expansion tank and I'll show you why you may have a need for an aftermarket expansion tank so I converted to an electric fan uh, which a lot of people do this is, uh, a lot of people do a Ford Taurus fan. I don't actually know what fan this is from, but uh, it's similar to the Ford Taurus fan. Uh, but anyways, once you convert to an electric fan, um, you're not gonna have a space to put your expansion tank. Um, now, originally when I did this swap, I, uh, I had an aftermarket expansion tank here and it was way too small. And uh, what happened was that was contributing to my overheating issue. So basically what an expansion tank does is when your motor and everything heats up and your radiator and your fluids everything heats up it actually pushes liquid out of the radiator so you'll see this little tube come in here liquid actually pushes up out of your radiator and it starts to fill your expansion tank and then as it, everything cools back down it will actually suck that liquid back up into the radiator now if your expansion tank is too small uh, it's gonna push out more liquid than what it can take back in, and uh, you don't, you can't really see a good angle right here, but this is actually a drain. So when the liquid gets all the way to the top, it actually starts to spill out of this drain. And this cap here uh, is just basically like, not even like a melt cap, it's not airtight, and that's important, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But basically, uh, the expansion tank is because that extra liquid needs somewhere to go, and it needs to be able to go in and out. And it's not going to be able to go in and out if this thing is airtight. And if you push out more and it spills out and then it tries to take in more than uh, what's left inside your expansion tank, you're going to get air bubbles in your radiator and then you're going to have issues getting your car cool. So that's why it's very important to have the correct size expansion tank. Uh, like I said, I did have an aftermarket expansion tank. It was way too small. Um, I paid like 80 bucks for the thing. I ended up sending it back so I can get my money back and right now I've got the stock expansion tank kind of zip tied in here as a temporary solution and it's basically been in there temporarily since last winter so it's definitely time to get this thing out of here and come up with something that's a little bit more legit so let's go ahead and do that. Alright so just to show you guys how I had this thing jerry rigged to the max basically um, just held in here by zip ties and it's really just sitting on top of the uh, lower radiator hose. Alright, so like I said, temporary solution, but um, yeah, it's been temporary since the winter time. So really, uh, when you pull this thing out here, as you can see, uh, the exit from the top of your radiator goes into the bottom of your expansion reservoir and your reservoir is going to fill up of course from the bottom to the top and when it sucks the liquid back in it's going to go back out from the top to the bottom. If you overheat or if you overfill your radiator it's going to continue to push up to the top and it's going to overflow out of this spout that you see right here. So what we're going to do is basically replicate this. We're going to make something that looks a little bit cooler. Uh, it's going to work a little bit better and uh, it's not going to be jerry rigged like this is. So basically to get this loose, um, you're going to have a hose clamp down here on the bottom. Disconnect that or cut it loose if your hose clamp is super crusty. It's not going to spray out and of course don't ever do this if, you're, uh, if your car is up to running temperature. You definitely want to do this on a cool car. So I'm just going to disconnect it, cover it with my finger and then just make sure that this hose is higher than the radiator. So nothing will come out of here but this thing since it's actually filled up to the fill line I'll just cover it with my finger and keep the mess to a minimum. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is actually take this PVC, I'm going to mock it up in the area and see how large I can actually make this thing. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut it to the size that I need it to be. Um, and I'm going to 
to show you guys how to make this pipe into an overflow tank. Now, you don't have to use a pipe. You can take what I'm showing you and apply that to any shape container as long as the uh, liquid can flow easily from the top to the bottom of the container. So I'm using the pipe because it's easy. I'll probably come back and make something cool uh, later on. All right, so this is the length of pipe that I chose right here. Uh, it's definitely gonna be more capacity than what I need, uh, but I pretty much chose this because it's gonna make everything level, it's gonna fit well, and it's gonna look good where it's at. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pipe down to size. And there we have, this is what our expansion tank it's almost gonna look like. Now, again, I wanna point out, you know, PVC is not rated for pressure. This application is not a high pressure situation. The overflow tank on a Mustang and many other cars doesn't hold pressure. But there are cars that have overflow tanks that do hold pressure. Uh, you don't wanna do this for a pressurized tank. For this thing, you can open the overflow tank whether the car is hot or cold. Uh, you don't ever wanna open a hot radiator, but this is not a pressurized overflow tank. So don't ever do this on a car that has a pressurized overflow tank. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this cap on and I'm just gonna do that by running a bead of silicone around the outside edge. And uh, honestly, I think this thing will be tight without any adhesive, but uh, the silicone will definitely seal it up and make it watertight. Again, folks, this is not pressurized. expansion tank is already halfway done. Alright, next up we're going to actually create the holes for the inlet and the drain. And remember for the inlet, uh, you want it to be able to fill from the bottom to the top, so the inlet needs to be as low as possible. This is what the tube is actually going to connect to that you saw coming off of the radiator. So if you look there on the inside, you're going to see I've got it sticking about halfway through the middle. That's about all you're going to need. And um, we're probably going to cut this off. We're probably going to give it about an inch, about right there. And we're going to go ahead and insert the inlet. I already put a little bit of adhesive on the inside of this hole. Uh, very carefully to make sure that I don't get it inside this tube when I put the tube in. And I use some stuff that's a little bit stronger than silicone that I like to use just because uh, I don't feel like silicone holds up that well to some of the weathering and stuff, just the heat cycle that this can go through. So this is about where we wanted to put it. And I'm going to add a little bit more adhesive on here to the outside. Alright, and that's how that looks. I wish it was a little bit more pretty, but that's going to work and it's not going to fall apart. It's not going to leak all our fluids out. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is make our drain hole. And uh, the way we're going to do our drain is it's actually going to, uh, the drain hole is going to be hidden internally. So on the OEM reservoir, as you can see, as it fills up and it gets to the top, it just spills out from the side here. What you can actually do is you can actually take this concept and hide it internally and have it drain out the bottom to where everything looks cleaner. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to drill a drain hole straight through the bottom here. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you put it in the middle or the bottom, but I, I, I kind of want to keep it uh, close to the side as possible just because uh, it'll keep it from wobbling around and things like that. So the way we're going to make this drain is uh, we're actually going to make this tube the length of where we want the uh, maximum fill line to be. So, um, basically, I'm going to cut the tube to the length that I want this thing to drain to. So if I only want it to fill half full, I'm going to cut this tube so that it only reaches halfway up. Um, I think what I'm going to do is cut it at about the three quarters mark. Make sure that you're going to have enough capacity to actually hold the liquid that you're going to need to hold. You also want your drain to stick out a little bit from the bottom 
so that you can actually direct where that liquid goes. And if you look on the inside, that's where it's actually going to start draining, which is right about here. So when the liquid raises up and it gets to here, it's gonna start going down the drain on the inside. All right, we're like 90% done with our expansion tank right now. So let's go ahead and set that off to the side for the moment. And we're gonna work on our cap. We're going to drill two little breather holes right here in the top. And these holes could actually serve as your uh, drain hole as well, but that would be messy. It just wouldn't, wouldn't be so clean. All right, so I went ahead, um, I drilled a new hole. In order to get this thing sealed to the hole, what I did is um, I basically took the screwdriver, heated it up over a flame, and then just went around the outside of the edges to uh, permanently bond that thing to the hole. And that's not so much to make it watertight. That was just to give it strength because these caps actually uh, close pretty tight. They're not really meant to be taken on and off. And uh, if this cap gets stuck, I don't want to end up ripping this thing off if it's only held on by silicone. So by melting the plastic together, uh, basically this thing is permanently bonded now. And uh, if this cap gets stuck, I can easily twist it off without uh, actually breaking this thing off. Now, if you were to use an actual PVC sealer, um, it would actually melt the plastic together for you, and you don't have to do all the flame and screwdriver stuff. Um, so just look in the piping aisle for uh, PVC cement or whatever. Uh, you spread it on with like a little cotton swab, and it actually melts the plastic, and once you bond it together, it's permanently bound. So um, I just didn't have any of that stuff on hand. What I did took more time, but it worked for me. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, put my sealer around the outside here and around the inside here. All right, folks, so there's our cap. So at this point, um, the reservoir is pretty much done. Um, it's ugly at this point, and it pretty much looks like something illegal. Um, but uh, I pretty much have to wait 24 hours for all my adhesives and everything to dry. Um, then I'm gonna throw some really cool paint on it and make a bracket for it to actually hang up next to the radiator. And uh, then we'll have this thing functional. And we're pretty much done here. So this is pretty much um, almost what the finished product is gonna look like. Um, while I was gone, this is actually the next stage you guys have seen this. Um, the adhesive is not fully dried right now. It's, that's because it's pretty cold here in Stu's garage right about now. Um, while you guys uh, were off camera, I went ahead and added a couple of little brackets to it that are gonna attach to certain points on the car, which I also measured out yesterday. And uh, at this point, uh, it just needs a coat of paint. <coughs> and uh, as you can see, it shines and looks actually metallic. So this is gonna come out looking pretty cool. All right, folks, so here's the finished product. I got everything all painted up and it's, um, it's looking pretty good right about now. So, we're gonna go ahead and throw this thing under the hood. All right, so we got everything hooked up right now. Um, remember your uh, inlet outlet, that's the piece that goes straight to the middle, and your drain is gonna face straight down. So we've got that hooked up. Make sure your line isn't kinked like you see here. Once you've got everything connected up, because you want the liquid to be able to flow um, easily once it's in there. All right, so we've got everything secured in there and now I have a legitimate uh, overflow tank. The last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and make this thing about half full with uh, water. You can use water or coolant of your choice. I prefer Gold Peak Sweet Tea for mine. And we're just gonna go ahead and pour that in there so that it has something to drink if it decides to uh, pull in any liquid and uh, we're just gonna cap it and be done. Now, if uh, you ever swap out your overflow tank and you fill it and you notice that your car is leaking after the first time that you drive or you know fluid is coming out, that's actually typical and that'll happen after you uh, fill your overflow or do your radiator or whatever. It has to get to its right level and when you overfill it, it's gonna purge out whatever's extra. That's why you have to have a large enough tank because once it purges, it's gonna need to be able to take that liquid back in 
So uh, don't be alarmed if you see it leaking the first time. Just make sure you go back and check all your connections for leaks. Um, also, for anybody who wants to say that PVC is not meant to handle high heat or pressure, things like that, listen, once this is not a pressurized setup. Um, we have the proper vent holes in here. This is not a pressurized setup. And anybody who's worried about excessive heat, by the time the liquid flows uh, through this little tube here and back down and mixes with the liquid that's actually in here, it's not even as hot as your engine. And your engine shouldn't be going over 180 degrees anyway. So um, that's pretty much it for the heat. You know, It's not like there's gonna be boiling water constantly sitting in here like it is inside of your engine. So um, it's definitely a good solution, a good money saver. A, uh, a custom or a high performance uh, overflow tank similar to this will probably cost you about $200. Like I said, the dinky little one that I bought was a cheap one and that was about 80 bucks. So for this 20 bucks, you can't really do much better. So I hope you guys appreciated the uh, DIY and um, catch up with Drift Fox next time.